Greetings, everyone. This is Kalei Ross with In Pursuit of Purity. It is my desire to learn as much as I can about chocolate and the chocolate making industry. I would love to share with you what I learn, so I hope you enjoy these videos. Well, greetings, everyone. This is Kalei Ross with In Pursuit of Purity. And perhaps if you've been following me, you know that I've been doing a series of blog posts entitled uh, cacao cultivates creativity, where I have just been experimenting with different ways of using cacao, other than the obvious thing of our wonderful chocolate. And if you haven't seen those blogs, go ahead and check them out. Uh, perhaps it may cultivate some creativity for you. But today, my guest is someone who I view as truly embodies this concept, um, because not only is he an award-winning chef and chocolatier, he is a renowned chocolate consultant, and now he is also doing cacao-infused gin and um, chocolate stout. He is just the master of so many things, and what is so amazing is he can also now add to his incredible resume that he has authored the book Monty and the Jungle Secret. I am so grateful to have a dear friend, David Greenwood Haig, back with me today. Welcome, Hi, David. Hi, Clay. Thank you for asking me back. Pleasure to be here. So I am so excited because David has this great book that is out. Uh, this is the obvious question because you are uh, incredibly knowledgeable about cacao as well as chocolate. Um, you could have easily written uh, like a, a super thick uh, history book, if you will, on chocolate and cacao. What inspired you to write this particular book? Uh, well, two, two things. One is, if you watch this space, there will be a chocolate drink history book coming out uh, with Joanne Harris and myself mm. uh, that we did when I was in Satome. So there will be a an adult version uh, of chocolate history and then there'll be chocolate cocktails and chocolate based hot drinks and cold drinks wow. rather than confections because chocolate's history has been 4,000 years of it being a drink mm -hmm. and we've had two or three hundred years of it being a confection so I was keen to try and redress the balance in the world of cookbooks because most cookbooks show lovely bonbons and, and <laughs> flowing chocolate and, and that's not how it was. So I want to go back and address some of that. Plus <laughs> there's less competition uh, in, in that market because most people aren't doing that. So, But the children's book, I visit schools fairly frequently. I get asked, most chocolatiers get asked if they'll go into schools or if, they, if a school can bring 60 children to their shop uh, which in the main isn't what most chocolate people want because a fine chocolate shop uh, is a little bit more ordered than 60 <laughs> children get excited seeing chocolate. <laughs> so you can understand. Uh, so lots of the chocolate makers I know in the UK will ring me and say, just had somebody ask me to go into their school, will you do that? And I'll go and do that. And I'll either go and help them do it if they want to do it themselves or I'll give them some of my notes so they can go and deliver it themselves or I'll go and do it and I uh, was hearing the same questions from children week after week and year after year because I've been going to schools for 15 years now and I go in from a nursery school all the way through to university mm. and do tastes so the questions don't differ they're just asked with longer words <laughs> or, or complex words uh so they were wanting to know what the biggest was uh who was montezuma because part of the curriculum is chocolate hits about five main areas of the of the school curriculum and they don't change right through uh until you get to university and then it might split and I end up working with hospitality students in universities and uh, uh, international tourism students. But with the younger children, uh, which is mainly between five and nine years old, then they have to do trade justice. 
so they'll talk about slavery and fair trade they mm -hmm. have to do uh, Olmec and Mayans so they will do uh, Aztecs and Mayans should I say so they'll know about Montezuma they'll touch on cr the Christopher Columbus and the Conquistadors uh, but they won't really have understood that chocolate came out that way or they may and if they do the clever teachers will say let's do a chocolate topic because mm -hmm. that's much more fun than a mm -hmm. history topic or a geography topic even though it's the same thing so the book was a way of taking uh, the children through history but told by two little sheep and as they tell that story and ask those questions all the right historical characters are in there and the dates are correct so it supports the curriculum it doesn't replace the curriculum in any way it just gives the teacher somewhere to hang that particular point of, of history or curriculum i think say remember when monty saw this uh, well that and then at the end of the exercise they make a chocolate lollipop together <laughs> uh, and that that was really the uh, the process so the teachers have got a bribe to say to <laughs> behave pay attention and then we'll make a lollipop right uh, and so so that there's one but it takes six weeks to get to that point can you give more of a brief synopsis of the story i mean you have some incredible characters you're laying out the entire history in essence of of chocolate well, cacao chocolate i'll leave that to you to to yeah. give the synopsis here yeah the, the basically the premise is to there's a little sheep sat at home and it's raining and he's bored and he wants to play out and in his imagination which children often have very vivid imaginations he imagines him going on adventures in his dad's sports bright sports car with his friend Eunice and obviously play on words intended uh, and they go off exploring the first place they go to is a uh, South America and they turn up in the rainforest and see uh, a group of monkeys sat round biting cocoa pods open, chewing the sweet flesh and then spitting out the beans because they're really bitter. And they wonder why that's happening. And then a, a, a local uh, Mayan comes and guides them through some of this story and tells them that the monkeys spit the beans out and then the beans grow again into a new tree and we they talk about Quetzalcoatl uh, bringing down this on a shaft of light from the morning star so we're introducing a spiritual element but not really because there are people of many faiths that are in the schools so all I'm saying to them is you can't separate spirituality from chocolate it's there uh, and from the Olmecs to the Catholic Church to the Jesuits to the Quakers to the, the the Jewish faith to Islam they all have a narrative that is chocolate related every single one of them has a story in the origin uh, of how it got there and most of it's to do with trade routes when we get past a certain level but it's there so it allows you to broad brush and that comes into religious education for the school and then we talk about a little bit about cocoa bean money and and how there was a you could buy slaves with cocoa beans so you touch on uh trade justice and uh, slavery sorry human rights there then we move through colonialism and you've got columbus and cortez coming in and discovering the land uh, and we've kept that polite uh, it was funny, I was in a school two weeks ago uh, and I, I tell a sanitised version because you don't really want to frighten kids mm -hmm. and that we, I talked about some of the gods would insist that you paid them a tribute if they were going to make the sunshine or they were going to make it rain and one of the little boy put his hand up and he was me, 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 me and, he, and, and I, I usually ask the teachers to pick the questioner because they'll know the character of the kid and mm -hmm. you don't get inappropriate things and she picked him 
and he said, and they used to tear the house out of the chest and offer it up to God, <laughs> and then they'd tear their feet off and put it in them. And he got all the gory details, oh, and he was boy. absolutely right. But he told the whole class all, all these horrible things. <laughs> uh, so, yes, children uh, are fascinated. And he'd been away and studied before I arrived at school. He was that interested and keen in the subject. So we take it from there. We then take it back to Spain and the when it was crossing the Gulf of Mexico to go back to Spain, there are stories of British pirates. They were called privateers uh, because they paid tax to the British government. If you were Somalian, you're a pirate. If you're British, you could be a privateer, which is a much nicer phrase, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, but it meant that the British government could tax things we'd stolen from Spain, really. Uh, and they looked in the holds of these ships and saw cocoa beans and they thought it was sheep poo and they believed that the Spanish must be eating this sheep poo uh, and that's why the two characters telling the story the sheep because I thought it was funny to have two sheep telling that story ah, as uh -huh. it went through so that's, uh, that's why they're sheep uh, as we were. and then we go to the Catholic Church in Spain because it was given to the church to look after originally to, to monks and the monks hid it away because they believed we'd all be very naughty if we had chocolate <laughs> so they hid it in cupboards and then it was given to nuns who were much cleverer and they changed the water from cold to hot put some of the other spices from the Americas that had come over with the same discovery uh, and all of a sudden they'd got this drink that was closer to what we drink. They added some honey to sweeten it, mm -hmm. and it was closer to what we would drink today. Then it went to France with the royal wedding and the dates, and it was Louis XIV and Princess Maria of Austria getting married. Louis then opened a cocoa house in London, uh, and then another one in Paris, and then everybody knew about chocolate. That was when the world discovered this because Spain knew about it and they kept it a secret and it sort of came out there there are bits of other stories it was in Portugal because Columbus was Portuguese sorry he was Italian but sailed under a port trained in Portugal and then sailed under a Spanish flag so there were three nationalities there he'd got Jewish people on his boats as navigators so it got into uh, the Jewish narrative from there. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of other things that aren't in this book. Uh, but then we have the three Quaker families in England, Fry, Cabri and Roundtree. And we tell their story very briefly because all children here, or most schools would take them for a trip to Cabri World. It's a, a visitor attraction. The problem being it costs you £500 to have a coach to mm. put your children in. You have to take them out of school. And if you take them out of school, you've got all the risk assessments and your medical needs for children with allergies and medicines and all those. So you, so you need extra staff. And then when wow. you get to the event, it's £9.50 per child into the event. <laughs> so all of a sudden, they've spent £2,000. Mm -hmm where they can bring a real chocolate maker into the school with some cocoa pods and a story and make lollipops with children <laughs> for a quarter of that price. Mm -hmm. uh, and providing I'm entertaining enough with the children, <laughs> uh, and I've got some videos and things like that that they do, as well as the exercises, then it's like a, a field trip at home, almost. And that's mm -hmm. where we... And this book supports that, and the first one stops at Fry inventing chocolate because the first ever chocolate bar was made by Fry in Bristol and then the second one uh, we go to which first draft copy anybody would have seen mm -hmm. uh, we take the uh, the sheep go to Dumibre which is a Quapacoco village in Ghana uh, and I visited this particular village when I worked for Divine Chocolate and the name of the village, Demibre, means if you love me, you'll still make the journey because it's a really tough road to get to. Mm. So anybody that makes it to the village 
must care for the people they're going yeah. to visit a lot. So I thought it was a lovely sentiment, and we we yeah. touch on trade justice with big chocolate demanding to pay less, and that's the story that runs mm. through this one. So it's trying to keep to curriculum, but with things that I know and mm -hmm. places I've been, so I can actually say that's a real village. They can go to Google and find that village and see that the name of the village actually means what I said it means. Uh, and I think modern children do that now. Well, so this is a major plug for your book because if children read your book, David, and study it, they are going to get an A in so many subject matters. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And it, it's another, it's a perfect thing for a parent to read, you know, because there's the six nights, the six chapters in the first one. Uh, so the six nights reading with just enough to settle people down. So if you've got a, a mug of hot cocoa as the bedtime routine, um, the weather's warm just now so but if you imagine this in winter time mm -hmm. with a mug of cocoa and this story of telling what the because the sheep get to drink chocolatle as part of the so they go through that process uh they understand the bean to bar process also within this so it's a lovely little mm -hmm. uh episode ready for bed to calm down and, and steady and i've the other thing that will go in the final set, which will be four books, there's a mindful chocolate tasting and there's a mindful hot chocolate drink where you hug the mug and you touch and you listen and, and, we'll, and that should bring children's uh, moods and temperament down <laughs> and, and calm them down ready for bed or mm -hmm. calm them down ready for learning whatever so we, we've tried to incorporate some of those modern techniques not that they're modern they've been around for an awful long time mm -hmm. but just to say we're going to use all five senses you know because people are surprised when i tell them we're going to listen to chocolate but as you know that's a really important part of our tasting mm -hmm. experience that we listen david you were talking about chapters and so i actually want to talk about that uh for our viewers, you have some incredible titles like Monty and the First Ba, <laughs> Monty and the Bean to Ba. <laughs> How oh, yeah. did you come up with these great names? <laughs> <laughs> I spent probably three weeks writing sheep puns. So you may you may have noticed I've got Brittany Shears in there. <laughs> There's there's also Ed Sheeran. Mm -hmm. uh, Monty plays in the basketball team <laughs> at, at school. Oh, we've got Will I Am, uh, mm -hmm. which is Will I Am. We've got Instagram instead of Instagram. And I wrote some jokes and I wrote some puns and I tried to put as many as I could in and then I edited some of them out because it got <laughs> to... I can see grown-ups tittering. <laughs> uh, but you know children didn't get all the puns so i uh yeah in fact they're still on my computer i've probably got four pages of sheep <laughs> jokes and puns uh yeah <laughs> tell, sadly tell the audience about the car monty's dad or the, car. Or, or the, uh, the lamborghini it's a, <laughs> a, a, a lamborghini of course what else would he drive right exactly in in the next one uh i've got a lambassador uh, huh? <laughs> to, to the government <laughs> so uh, there's not as many puns in the next but maybe I need to go back through them and pun <laughs> them <laughs> do you have a favourite chapter in the book? Uh, I think it's the first one where they see the monkeys and I think to realise when I, when I go to Origin I it was interesting because fruit bats, rats and children steal cocoa take pods yeah. off the tree because children want the sweet baba <laughs> or the mucilage, whatever you prefer, uh, and so do rats and bats. If you leave other food for bats and rats, they'll take that because they're lazy and they'd rather eat bananas than eat, than have to try and get through a cocoa shell. Whereas children don't want bananas, they're fed up of bananas, they just <laughs> want the cocoa. Mm. So I loved that uh, and I would teach people, say, they're not stealing it, you're sharing the forest's bounty with mm -hmm. these three groups of, of animals or people 
you know, they're not stealing, that it's nature's bounty and you share it with them. And sometimes, you know, like giving fruit bats bananas, you, you if you give them a gift, they'll leave your cocoa alone. And that's a good <laughs> thing to, to, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it was nice to, 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 to try. I'm not sure all farmers were convinced when, because uh, sometimes children can be a little disruptive, but in the main, <laughs> It was a nice way to describe that we share this 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 crop, this bounty. Mm -hmm. The third instalment, which is talking about uh, the biting midges uh, that we all have to endure, will hopefully have a redeeming uh, part of that story that children will realise that ecology is a cycle and a chain and mm -hmm. we're all involved in that chain. And if you break one part of the chain, then we have an issue mm -hmm. and we keep seeing that on TV uh, and in our news. So this sure. is just my little way of chocolate telling that same story, which and that's visiting Sautome, which again is a place I've been to. So the sheep will visit the chocolate islands and they'll talk about uh, some of the issues around the chocolate islands and the slavery that was there with the Portuguese. So it, it'll touch back on those points to reinforce uh, mm -hmm. curriculum again. Boy, these sheep get around even more than I <laughs> have in my lifetime, I think. Well, well certainly <laughs> the, last, the, the last 18 months we've not been very far, have we? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the illustrations. Like, uh, who is responsible for the illustrations as well as their inspiration for their style? It took me uh, a long time. I'd got this story, the first story, written for probably two or three years, mm -hmm. uh, and I just couldn't find because I, I didn't have three or four thousand pound kicking around that I could just go and and hire an illustrator. I talked to a couple of professional illustrators, uh, and they just seemed to disappear. They didn't like the idea. Hmm. For, for whatever reason, this didn't float their boat. Uh, and I talked to one, and he did me a great brief and said, let's do that. And it was going to be done like a, like icons. So you might have seen my little chef icon I use sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he did that. And then the sheep were little icons, and they would tell that story. A bit like Peppa Pig. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he just vanished. And I couldn't get couldn't get hold of him. Oh. Couldn't couldn't didn't hadn't paid him, so I still owe him some money. Uh, and he's just not responded. He doesn't want to do it. Gone. So I thought, okay. And I thought, well, somebody will come along. I'll find someone. It's this story will be told. Uh, and I met a, a guy at church who I've known for twenty years, who's just retired, and he was painting the scenery for a play. And I said, you paint, Barry? And he said, yeah. I said, and I, I said, you don't fancy having a, a look at this, dear? And I showed him the book, and his wife writes scripts for the play. And she said, I love this. Can I help? <laughs> so his wife's been through the script, or the, the, the narrative, and we've read the story to him, and then I've showed him real pictures of cocoa pods. I've shown him a matate and a mano di pedra, so he knows where these things are coming from. And then he's painted these in, in watercolour. So I've got all the images as watercolour images. Well, this is really great because it is an actual resource in many ways. It's not just a, a book to entertain, but it's a book to inform. It's a book to educate. It provides us with a great context of, of what it is that we are able to enjoy today, um, you know, s s where, where it's all from. And so, uh, you know, thank you so much for doing it in such an amazingly captivating way. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. I've really, really enjoyed uh, doing it. And I, as I say, I've been writing on the third one today uh, and been enjoying finding out all about biting and flying midges and the reproductive cycle of a cocoa tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you know that a cocoa tree is very promiscuous? I, I, I did I, I not. Know. You, you, can, you can pollinate a, a single flower three times, hmm. uh, which is really unusual oh. in nature. 
but really difficult to pollinate. Only ten mm -hmm. percent of all the flowers ever get pollinated. My so goodness. ninety percent of the flowers just wither and die. That should increase our appreciation even should more. Be. Absolutely. The effort yeah. that when you look at the, the story that I'm hoping to tell with these midges is the effort they have to go to to pollinate a tree and then the effort the chocolate maker and cocoa farmer has to go through that whole process should give us a greater appreciation and respect for the for the amount of work and effort and skill Absolutely. that's gone into crafting that and it's yeah. right from the tiniest midgey through to you know the big chocolate company mm -hmm. with the, you know we all think we're clear but without that tiny little midgey no chocolate it just goes to show that everything ha like we talked about has a purpose uh yeah. even little tiny things that we t we get annoyed with <laughs> we we'll have to not get too annoyed with them really because yeah we them. yeah yeah we need them <laughs> So David, share with us, how is it that we can get a copy of your book? Well, I've got it on eBay currently, but people could uh, drop me an email on my website. There's only me there, so if you do the contact contact us part, it will come to me. Uh, and I can put up a, bo a box like like this. Uh, let's do that. So I've got, my, my screen's mirrored, which is why it keeps... It, it means that this is the right way around if I do that. So in there you'd get a kit to make uh, eight lollipops and a book and the instructions on how to make the lollipop. So if you were going to do this with your children, then at the end of reading it, they get to make some lollipops together, which is a, a great thing to do for the vacation because mm -hmm. the kids are at home needing something to do. Or it's a great thing to do. Uh, when when the weather's uh, horrible and those kits currently are, are, are 25 UK pounds and then depending where it is in the world depends on post I've just sent some kits to to Bali uh, and they cost me 10 pounds to post if it's UK an island and, and close Europe it's included if it's further afield I have to charge extra for mm -hmm. obvious reasons well, David, thank you so much. Once again, thank you for your efforts. And I really appreciate the fact that you are making an effort to help um, our kids learn about the process as well as educating us adults in so many different ways. Thank you so much. And parents, remember your, your children could potentially get an A if they study this book thoroughly. And it's so only it's dark chocolate in the kits. We don't want dairy, no nuts, no dairy, and it's dark chocolate. So it's the healthiest it can be. Uh, without going to no sugar. Oh, thank you so much, David. It was great Absolute having pleasure. you here. Yeah, really good to talk to you again, Kelly. Mm -hmm.